Okay, let's get started with lesson 2.6 today. We're gonna talk about proving statements about segments and angles. We got a couple things we need to discuss first. And the first thing is a theorem. Okay, this is similar to a postulate, except a theorem can be proven. Okay, it's one of our foundation things in geometry, all right, just like postulates were, just like definitions are, but a theorem can actually be proven true, um, unlike postulate, which we have to assume is true. And because we're gonna hit our first theorem today, it's a pretty easy theorem, and uh, we'll talk about it briefly. Okay, the other thing we need to talk about before we really get moving is this whole congruence versus equals. And we talked about that before. Remember, we said something like if you have AB is congruent to CD, with the segment symbols, you use the congruent sign. Without the segment symbol, you use the equal sign. We can switch back and forth between these two things, and this is very important. You need to know how you do this in a proof. So if you have this and you want to switch to that, your reason is the definition of congruence. Okay? If you want to switch from the congruent sign over to the equal sign, it's definition of congruence. So you have congruent, you have the segment symbols, you switch to equals without the segment symbols. This is your reason. If you want to switch this direction, it's still the definition of congruence. Doesn't matter. Good definitions work both ways. We've talked about that in class quite a bit. Good definitions always work both ways. You know, if it's a right angle, then it's 90. If it's 90, then it's a right angle. Okay, good definitions work both ways. If I have congruence, then I can switch it to equals, definition of congruence. If I have equals, I can switch it to congruence, still definition of congruence, okay? We don't call one definition of equals and the other definition of congruence. All right, here we go, two theorems. Theorem 2.1, congruence of segments. Do not memorize theorems by number. Do not memorize theorems by number. If you put theorem 2.1 for your reason, I don't know what it is. I don't memorize them by number. I don't, exp I don't want you to memorize them by number. All right, so theorem 2.1, congruence of segments. What this says, and the book goes into this a little bit more in detail, but all it says is that the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties work for congruent segments, okay? So remember what reflexive was? A, B equals A, B, okay, something like that. So reflexive just says that segment A, B is congruent to segment A, B. That's all it says. A segment is congruent to itself. That's what the reflexive property, and we just say property, reflexive property of congruence, okay? Symmetric, all right? Um, X, Y is congruent to P, Q. We can switch it and just say PQ is congruent to XY. Now, we don't do that very often. Once again, reflexive is very important. Three stars, symmetric one star. Okay, but all, you, all this says is just like we did for equals, where we can switch it, we can do it for congruence. And then transitive. Okay, transitive is three stars. We use this one a lot. Okay, so I'm going to kind of do this in three lines here. So maybe MN is congruent to... Um, RS. RS is congruent to TU. So we see this here in the middle. It's the same. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. I know my writing's a little bit small here. All right, MN is congruent to RS. RS is congruent to TU. Skip the middle. MN is congruent to TU. Okay, that's the whole idea of the transitive property of congruence. Okay, and it works for segments. And then the next theorem, theorem 2.2, says that those theorems or those properties work for angles, okay? Reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties work for congruent angles, okay? Same thing. So reflexive is really important. We use it a lot. Symmetric we hardly ever use. Transitive we use a lot, okay? So let's talk about reflexive real quick. Okay, reflexive. Angle A is congruent to angle A. That's reflexive. Okay. Symmetric. Angle A is congruent to angle B. We can switch it. Angle A, or sorry, angle B is congruent to angle A. We can switch it up like that. Okay, that's symmetric. And then finally, transitive. Same idea, you can skip the middle. 
All right, so this is transitive. This one was reflexive, symmetric, transitive. All right, it's so transitive. Angle Q is congruent to angle R. Angle R is congruent to angle S. Skip the middle, skip the R's. Angle Q is congruent to angle S. Okay, oh, get that in the screen there. Okay, those are your basic concepts. Now let's apply them. Okay, let's go ahead and apply them. So, let me grab my other sheet. And for some reason I can't find it. There it is. Okay, here we go. There's your picture. B is the midpoint of AC. C is the midpoint of BD. We are going to prove that AB equals CD. This thing here is equal to this thing over here. All right, we're going to do that in a two-column proof. You can see I already have it set up here. So copy that down, pause the video, get that copied, and then get ready to do the proof. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right. You should have copied it by now so that we are ready to do this proof. I'm going to kind of keep sliding up and down so I can maybe talk about it, but then i got to write my thing. So statements. We want to start by just writing our givens. B is the midpoint of AC. That is a given. Second statement. Same thing. I have another given, so we'll copy it down. Now, sometimes the book will combine these two together into statement one and just write given for one reason. I usually do it in separate ones, okay, like that. All right, now, what does midpoint mean? Keep in mind, what does midpoint mean? It means the point in the middle, right? It means that the two things around it have to be congruent. So if B is the midpoint of AC, then what do I know about this and this? Well, we know they have to be congruent. So I want to write that down. AB is congruent to BC. Now, what is my reason? Now, reasons. Reasons can be postulates, theorems, properties, definitions, things like that. So this was a definition, definition of midpoint. All right. Okay, let's go back to our other given. All right, C is the midpoint of BD. So let's look at that over here. So if C is the midpoint of BD, we're not worried about this section over here, just this. What do I know? Well, you should know that BC is congruent to CD. Let's write that down. BC is congruent to CD. Why? Well, once again, it has to do with this idea of midpoint. So definition of midpoint. Now, we're actually going to apply something from this lesson. What do you see here? Same thing, right? It's in the middle. AB to BC, BC to CD, skip the middle. AB to CD. Now what tells us we're allowed to skip the middle? You guys remember? If not, you need to go back and look at your notes. You gotta get this one memorized. It's a really important one. Skipping the middle. Transitive. Transitive property. Sometimes we abbreviate a little bit. Prop for property of, now don't put equality. Look at what we have right here. Okay? Transitive property of congruence. All right, we're not quite done with this proof. Look what we were trying to prove. It says A, B equals C, D. No segment symbols. Equals. All right now I have congruence with segment symbols. Hey, we just talked about that, remember? Right here. If I have congruent and I want to switch to equals, or if I have equals and I want to switch to congruent, I'm allowed to do that. Why? This thing right here, that's going to be important. Definition of congruence. Okay, so let's do the switch. So I'm going to take my A, B as congruent to C, D, and I'm going to say A, B equals CD. Why? Definition of congruence. And there we go. We proved it. The thing you're trying to prove should be the last statement in your proof. Okay, the last thing. That should be last. If it's way up here in the middle, you didn't need all the stuff after it. All right? This is last. Once you get here, you are done. All right? So stop when you get there. All right. One more proof. Okay? Once again, copy this down. All right, now this one doesn't have a prove, it just says solve for x, okay? But let's get that copied on. So we got a w, x, y, and z. That's 5x minus 2, that's 3x plus 8. Here's my givens, there's actually, these are givens too, because they're in the picture, so we'll do that later. And we're gonna solve for x, okay? That's like my prove. Prove x equals some number, all right? So get that copy down, pause if you need to. I'm gonna get started here as soon as I zoom out, but you, you pause it as necessary. All right, statements. I have two of them, two given. So WX is congruent to XY, given. I have another given. 
xy is congruent to yz. Given. Now, we just learned it. Look what we got here again. All right, what do you see? It's repeated, right? It's in the middle. So we skip it. Wx is congruent to yz. What's our reason there? What do we call it when we skip something? Transitive property, in this case not of equality. Look at what we said. It said congruence, a transitive property of congruence. Okay, number four. Because I'm going to end up doing algebra on this, I can't have a congruence. I've got to switch congruence over to equals. So Wx equals Yz. All right, just did this. Just did it on the other proof. Talked about it at the beginning of the lesson. Anytime you switch from congruent to equals, what's our reason? Better get it memorized. Definition of congruence. Anytime you switch from congruent to equals or equals to congruence, it's definition of congruence. All right, now, we usually don't wait this long for our other givens, but we're going to do them now. Kind of late in the proof, but we're going to use this given. Wx, well, what do we know about it? It equals 5x minus 2. That's a 5x minus 2. If you need to zoom in on your computer, maybe I can just bring the paper up real close. See it? 5x minus 2 and 3x plus 8. Okay? So Wx equals 5x minus 2. That's a given. Okay, it was given to me at the beginning of the problem. I just didn't write it down right away. And then yz equals 3x plus 8. That's also given. Now, here's what we're going to do. Wx, I see it twice. Yz, I see it twice. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to put it in right there. And I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to put it right there. So what's that called when I take something and I put it in for something else? Well, if you play sports or something like that, if, if a coach is going to put somebody else in for you in the game, well, what's that called? It's a substitution, right? I'm going to take this Wx, I'm going to put 5x minus 2 in for it. And it's okay to do that because they're equal, all right? So now instead of this Wx right here, I'm going to put 5x minus 2 equals. And instead of yz right here, I'm going to put 3x plus 8. Why? I substituted. Substitution property of not, equal, or not congruence, because there's an equal sign, so we put equals. Now, this turns into one of those algebra proofs that you guys told me the other day you thought were pretty easy. All right, so what do we do? Well, we subtract 3x. So 2x minus 2 equals 8. Well, since we subtracted, that's the subtraction property of equality. Now what? I'm going to add 2. 2x equals 10. If I added, that's the addition property of equality. Now let's finish it. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 5. Since I divided, that's the division property of equality. Now, you're going to see one in your homework that's almost the exact same as this proof. So you shouldn't have a lot of struggles with it. I mean, if you do, it's okay to ask questions, but this should give you a pretty good idea of how you do that type of thing. All right, so it's not a lot new in this lesson. All right, we had this, this couple ideas here. Remember, a theorem is something that can be proven. Congruent versus equality. If I switch to congruent to equals or equal to congruent, I always use this reason, definition of congruence. And then all we talked about is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties work for segments, and they also work for angles. In our proofs, we just did it with segments all the time. We're going to do more with angles later on. All right, we're going to get into that a little bit in uh, lesson 2.7, actually. Then we did this proof, and then we did this proof. And that's it for the lesson. Okay, so make sure you take good notes. All right, we'll probably have a little bit of a proof in your video quiz, but definitely be talking about this. Definitely be talking about this and how you use it for angles and things like that. Make sure you realize we call it the reflexive property of congruence because we have a congruent sign or the transitive property of congruence. Okay? All right, so take good notes, and we'll see you guys in class.